Pakistan's foreign minister says his government is determined to bring stability to neighboring Afghanistan. Shah Mahmood Qureshi is appealing to the Taliban to form an inclusive government. Well, he's sitting down now with Al Jazeera's Osama bin Javed. Let's take you live now to Islamabad, Osama. Yes, Pakistan has insisted that it will not unilaterally recognize a Taliban government and says it is using all it can to try and bring the Taliban towards an inclusive government which represents all sides uh, of and all factions of Afghanistan. And with us uh, is the Foreign Minister, Shah Mahmood Qureshi. Thank you very much for being with Al Jazeera. Mr. Qureshi, it's been a very fluid situation. What is your assessment on the ground and is this going to work? Uh, whether it is a government which is formed by the Taliban or it is formed by international pressure? Certainly it is a fluid situation, it's an evolving situation. But before I comment on that, let me, Osama, uh, share with you. Who are we? We are victims. Pakistan is a victim of this war on terror. Um, we've had 80,000 casualties. We've had an economic loss of over $150 billion. We had to deal with 2 million, close to 2 million internally displaced people. We are uh, hosting over 3 million Afghan refugees the world had forgotten. And we were not responsible for 9-11. There was no Pakistan involved. In fact, people rushed into Pakistan, you know, when there was, a, uh, there was an operation that started, uh, you know, by the Americans without consultation. Uh, we were not consulted. And people came in. And we had to deal with them. We had to cleanse an area, our areas. We had to fight. We had to, you know, we had to protect our people. Uh, innocent lives were lost. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we were asked to do more. Whenever we engaged with the international community with sincerity, we were doubted. Uh, we were questioned. We kept telling the world uh, that uh, the, 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 the kind of government you've imposed in Afghanistan does not enjoy political support. There is corruption, uh, there is uh, misgovernance. Nobody listened. Uh, so, in this environment, Pakistan wants to be a partner in peace. Pakistan has been, and it's been internationally acknowledged, a facilitator for peace, you know, negotiating. If you spend a year, if you waste a year uh, in Doha, uh, and, and listen to Ashraf Ghani, who is a uh, stumbling block in the intra-Afghan negotiations. Is Pakistan responsible? Certainly not. We kept saying, keep the uh, process of negotiations in tandem with the date of withdrawal. Unconditioned withdrawal? Were we consulted? No. Withdrawal? Were we consulted? No. Now, Despite that, we have remained positive, we, have, we are engaging. Now, evacuation, the immediate challenge uh, that people are facing, the international community is facing is evacuation, safe evacuation. What is Pakistan doing? Positive, constructive role. We are facilitating. Our planes are, uh, are flying into Kabul and uh, getting people out. Our embassy is, is functioning 24-7, helping people. Uh, diplomatic personnel, international organizations. Are we being acknowledged? No. We're not even being mentioned uh, in the list of countries that are helping uh, evacuate people. Is this an oversight? I am not sure. But uh, who do you hold responsible for what is happening in Afghanistan? Because a lot of finger pointing in the weeks preceding to uh, the Taliban takeover has been towards Pakistan, uh, that it is Pakistan's uh, version of a government that what Pakistan wanted is now in place. Is that true? And why is Pakistan saying to the international community uh, that it wants help if it is its government in charge in Afghanistan? The first of all, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan has been blamed enough. You know, we've had enough of bashing. We've had our share of bashing. We, you know, stop scapegoating Pakistan for internal failures. Now, uh, I was shocked, you know, when I was in, uh, sitting in Tashkent listening to uh, Ashraf Ghani when he said, oh, things have gone wrong because 10,000 infiltrators have be, sort of have been pushed into Afghanistan from Pakistan. 
I mean, really, it was the most absurd statement made by anyone. And everybody was listening. The question is, you had a force of 300,000 trained people. You know, you had uh, air cover. You had, uh, you were the most, uh, you know, you were well-equipped, trained. But you didn't have the will to fight. Now, is Pakistan responsible for that? Really, it doesn't happen. How did, how did the Taliban uh, move with such swiftness, you know, at ease? There was no support from Pakistan. Uh, well, there was... No, the question is, it's an internal support. Even when the forces were there in Afghanistan, you know, uh, when the withdrawal hadn't started, you know, 40 to 45 percent of Afghan territory was under their control. You know, when Ashraf Ghani and his regime was sitting in Kabul, you know, uh, they, they, they were restricted to, to uh, you know, uh, uh, Kabul and some, you know, urban centers. But in the rural areas, uh, uh, honestly, uh, they had no writ. Okay, so that was then and we're in now. Uh, what happens now in Afghanistan? What does Pakistan favor? What is the role that Pakistan is playing? Pakistan, and how can there be peace in Afghanistan? Pakistan is part of the International Coalition for Peace. Pakistan wants to see reconciliation. Pakistan is not just engaging with the Taliban. Pakistan is engaging with entire Afghan leadership here in the Foreign Office. Just a few days back, I had the erstwhile leaders of the erstwhile Northern Alliance, you know, they were not Taliban uh, supporters. Why are we engaging with them? Why, uh, you know, why have we been going to Kabul, you know, trying to convince them that we have learned from the 90s, let us not repeat the mistakes uh, of the 90s. We want to be forward-looking. We want a peaceful, stable Afghanistan. It is in our enlightened self-interest because we want. And we want regional connectivity. How do we get regional connectivity without peace in Afghanistan? Finally, we, we're running out of time very quickly. How confident are you that the Taliban are going to form a government which is going to be inclusive? They're going to make sure that all the rights of women and other minorities are respected? And are you urging them to do so? I cannot uh, predict the future, but where I am clear is we want an inclusive government. We want a government uh, in uh, Afghanistan which respects uh, human rights. Uh, I think uh, the initial uh, statements that are coming out from uh, the leadership are indicative of a new approach. We should encourage that. We should encourage the moderate element, the, the, the political approach, because there is no military solution. If there was one, you couldn't find it in 20 years. So, listen to Pakistan. Stop scapegoating Pakistan. Pakistan wants to be a partner in peace. Pakistan can be the most uh, trusted uh, interlocutor in this evolving situation. Mr. Qureshi, thank you very much for talking to us. There you have it from the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, expressing that Pakistan is interested in peace and does not want to be scapegoated for what has happened in the past. Okay, Osama bin Javed in Islamabad. Thank you very much indeed.